guys. <clears throat> so today I wanted to try and use these chalk markers that I received from this company and use them in a painting and with brushes. And so normally you would use these chalk markers. They're also called like bistro markers, sometimes uh, liquid chalk. Normally you would use these type of things on a non-porous surface. That's their main kind of purpose or windows, mirrors, so non-porous surfaces. But I want to try using them on other things. And these ones specifically are from chocola.com. I do have a discount code for you uh, down below. Uh, so when you use that code, uh, it does help me out a little bit, so that would be great. Uh, but here it says, all non-porous surfaces, car and home windows, wine glasses, chalkboards, whiteboards, plastic. I have 10 chalk pens here, six, and it comes with six metallic markers. And this is some chalk markers here. This is kind of a more bright set. This is a little bit more pastel set, I feel like. Um, or it includes some more pastel colors, and this includes some kind of neon fluorescent colors. There is a reversible tip here, so you can take the tip out and you get um, the chisel tip or you get a bullet tip. And it's a six millimeter bullet tip. So there is a giveaway uh, that they are sponsoring right now, so go and check that out. You uh, need to take a look at that video there, and uh, that will give you all the details, but basically um, you need to be subscribed to both of us, Chocola and me, and you need to like this video and like the other one I did. And also I would encourage you to go check out their Instagram because uh, they have some cool ideas on there. And I'm just going to start by prepping this canvas, if I can get it open. And I am just using Liquitex Basics here. So in the other video, I did swatch them out. And I went and actually got some other ones, just some ones from Michaels, just to compare a little bit. And I'm not sure what the price difference is. I'm in Canada, so they have a little bit of a, some of their products are not available in Canada. So this is all done now. Might as well do the sides a little bit too. And I'm just gonna do kind of a theme of that. So I'm gonna let this dry. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna show you. So I have this, this is a non-porous, just like a clear report cover. You don't need to get anything fancy. Any non-porous surface will work. And then I am going to put out, lay out color on this. So this will be my palette. So I'm just gonna get out colors that I think um, can work together. Um, I'm gonna do kind of cool Christmas colors as in um, cool tone. We're gonna see here. These are the metallic markers. So these ones you don't have to activate. You don't shake up or like pump to get them going. So if we were to compare, I did compare um, the this, these are two that I got from Michaels. So I would say that I do like these chalk markers better than um, like this one. This, these ones are more creamy, more opaque, more chalky, um, and they go on less streaky. So that's that to compare that. And then the metallic ones, um, here, I compared it with this one. Now this is a different kind of metallic, um, like this one you don't pump and it's a different kind of marker. So what's interesting, what I'm waiting to see is if this will kind of activate with water like these ones, or if this one will, because I know these ones do. I've done a little bit of research kind of experimenting with these prior to this video so that I could see and so that one is, is a little bit more yellow gold. And so I do actually prefer this color better, but um, you know, they probably have some more colors of this one is a little bit green toned. So I do prefer, and then this one has a chisel tip, which I like uh, for applying. So you can see it has a little bit better of a finish than, than the Chocola one. Um, the, the color. But um, I really, really like their blue and their green metallic. 
and the silver goes out on really nice too. Um, so it's just, I'm not sure what the difference is between how these are manufactured, how they're created. I do like this, these metallic ones here, but when I compare the gold ones, and that's why I got this one, because I want to see the color, because I don't, I'm, I'm just not a fan personally of the green gold. And so I wanted to actually buy this one because I was hoping it was going to be a little bit more yellow gold. And it is. So that's why I got that. And then I thought, oh, I'll just buy a pink one to compare it as well, like with these ones. And I do have to say that I like the Chocola ones better um, for the chalk markers. And the metallic ones, it actually depends on which color you're going for. So in the gold, I like the other one better, but in the blue and green, I like the Chocola metallic better. So whatever, whatever that means. <laughs> so I am going to uh, just speed up this drying process and then I'm gonna be back. Okay, so I am going to use a couple of the metallic ones that I like. So the silver and the blue and the green, and I'm gonna use the pink of the metallic from Chocola. So when you're using these chalk markers, in a non-traditional uh, way for chalk markers to be used. So basically, when you're using them on a porous surface, you want to um, kind of mix them up on a palette ahead of time and then apply them with a brush. If you just write right on here, if you, if you make marks on here, the marks will stay. You will be able to move some color around for sure, but the marks will stay. I'm just going to show you a few samples here. So that is one where I used stamps and oh, the other thing is they stamp awesome. So they are really great with stamping. So here's one and you can see it kept the mark and the sooner you get to it, the better. This is just mixed media paper, uh, watercolor paper. Actually, it sinks in even more, which makes sense. Um, and these are stamps and so stamps. a good idea is if you do want to make marks make an intentional mark rather than just scribbling and then move the color and then you still get that nice mark that you made or stencil whatever but it also moves takes some of that color from it and moves it so I just use some stencil and then you have that kind of like subtle image in the background but like here's here's watercolor so you can see that it doesn't really work um, so if you, so you just have to know that that mark is going to stay there. Just, it's typical of even, you know, watercolor pencils, it'll do the same thing. So you want to be intentional about which marks, what kind of marks you make. You just got to know, like with any kind of art media, um, when people usually have problems, like why isn't my watercolor paper working? Why isn't this moving? Why is this not, what, you know, it's usually because of the surface that you're doing and the technique you're using with it is not matching up or you just aren't aware that you have to try a different technique because you're working on a certain surface. So different surfaces require different techniques for different results and you just have to know what to expect and you also have to know, you know, when you're experimenting, you know, let's try this and I think it's going to turn out like this but then you may have to be willing to be like, okay, that didn't happen, but what if I try this? And um, sometimes the result will be what you expected, and then sometimes it'll be completely different than what you expected. And so you just have to know how to adjust for those types of things. Now, the difference between chalk markers and paint markers, sorry, I'm talking a lot, uh, but I know I'm anticipating questions, and a lot of people might say, well, why don't I just get paint markers? So paint markers are completely different. Acrylic paint markers, I have a lot of them. They're quite streaky. And I'm just going to show you actually really quickly with one I have. So this is a paint marker, which I love from Jane Davenport. And you can see how streaky it is on a non-porous surface. So this is acrylic paint in a marker, basically. And you don't, they, it won't work the same way. It's not going to get creamy. It's not going to get opaque on a non-porous surface. Paint markers won't kind of, you won't be able to move them around. Because these are made to wash off after time. So... Um, you because they're made to wash off you can you can activate them a little bit and so they're not considered a water soluble media but you can activate them um, whereas paint markers you can't really activate them just because it's that's not really what they're meant for so paint markers are mostly I use them for on dark surfaces where I want a pop of color on top mark a typical marker won't put any color on top if that makes sense Okay, so let's get started here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get kind of a wash going. I want some cool colors, so I'm gonna grab this pink and I'm just going to, like I said, use this as a palette. 
And if you need, you know, if it's seeming like there's not enough paint coming out, there is right now, but you would just shake it and, you know, maybe pump it a little bit. And let's do a blue. So these colors are so nice and like the pastels are just amazing. And you actually, when you activate them with water, you really don't need too much at all. So that's, this is the other thing. You want to know how much water you're going to use and how much water you need. Because for a certain, you know, if you want to do a big wash and a very subtle light wash, you're going to use more color. And if you want to just kind of keep the intensity of the color, you're going to use less water, which makes sense. It's just, um, think of it like watercolor. It's, it kind of works the same way, but it's different because it's totally not watercolor. Um, so I've got two different blues. Maybe let's do, what's this one? I think this is a teal. That might work. Okay, so let's try that. We'll just see. Also, these go great. They layer on top of each other, which other chalk markers that I've tried, they don't layer on top of each other as well. I'm going to use this. Uh, see how that works. I'm not sure. To just apply some color. I'm just going to start with just... I do want a light wash over all the colors, or all over all, the whole canvas. So this is different because I'm going for a watercolor look on a gessoed canvas. So, you know, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to get because I'm doing this on video. I haven't tried this ahead of time. Um, sometimes, some, you know, I like to experiment a little bit so I kind of know a little bit about what to expect, but then I also like to save some of my research and experimenting for the video so that we can kind of discover some of these things together. So right now I'm using quite a bit of water so you can see I've already kind of used up my colors there. And these brushes, the hair's on there, but that's totally fine, that's typical. People, like, I, there are definitely, you know, with cheaper brushes you're going to get more hair loss, but even with really pricey brushes, you can still get hair loss. It's not like, you know, you're gonna be able to completely avoid it. And by hair loss, I mean the paintbrush. So this is a little bit too intense, so I'm just gonna add some water to it. The other thing is, oh, and these blend really well. So look at that, we're starting to get a little purple feel there with the pink. Like they mix, these colors mix so nice together. I love them. I was going to say something. can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these dry because watercolor dries a lot lighter. So I'm interested to see how these chalk markers dry. Like, will they draw lighter or will they dry lighter like um, watercolor? Or will they keep their their shades, the intensity. Okay, so I've got some nice wash there. For these markers, this will come off when it's dry, but you can just kind of, and I'm not using watercolor brushes for this, I'm using acrylic brushes for this, because I have, so the gesso wasn't dry there, you can see that it was still wet there. But you know what? That all adds to the texture for me. But if you don't like that, I would make sure that your gesso is dry. When you're doing videos, sometimes you speed things up. And when you're doing videos right before Christmas where you've got a million things to do, but you have to do the videos, you're definitely going to speed things up. Normally I would have left this and then uh, finished this video like later on in a few hours or even the next day but that's okay. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll be back again. Okay, so this is pretty much dry. Um, if it feels cool to the touch, then it's still wet. And so you want it to be room temperature for it to be dry. I don't need it to be completely dry. Um, I think it'll be okay. And you can see the little spots where I kind of pulled up gesso with the with the brush, but yeah, that's not going to be a big deal to me. So I have some ornaments here. I was thinking about doing some background stenciling 
just very faint, subtle, just to add like a little bit of mixed media kind of, um, just kind of a mixed media look in there. So I have some Christmas stencils here. Zaps, I should say. So I want to put a little bit of a subtle snowflake pattern in the background just because I think that will look nice. So this is actually not a stencil. It's just a, like a die cut cardstock kind of thing that I've had for forever and I bought it to use it as a stencil basically. Uh, it was just a 12 by 12 special cardstock thing I bought at Michael's and I'm just using a stencil brush here and I'm just picking up some of that pigment some of the paint uh, with a stencil brush and I'm just I just want a subtle pattern so I'm not trying to get like a really definite outline or anything and you do have to be careful that you don't have it too watery uh, because you can get little petals like that there and um, I mean in this case it's not really going to make too much of a difference but when you're stenciling you do want to have it not not very watery for stenciling and many of you I'm sure know that but there are people um, that don't know that I teach classes all the time and lots of people don't understand that so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of putting the color right on the stamp and you do want to be careful if you do this because it can maybe kind of tear up the tip a little bit. So just be aware that that can happen. Um, so rather than me drawing on the stamp and, you know, kind of swiping the tip over the stamp, I'm kind of dotting it and then just using the brush to swirl it around. So again, I have a little bit too much on there. Like I said, you know, I'm, I mean, I've never painted with chalk paints before, so <laughs> this is just kind of me experimenting. But that's, that's, you know, part of the reason why I'm doing this video is so that I can kind of figure it out on camera so you guys can see different things that I do and, you know, how I kind of fix things that I do, which is what I'm doing right now. So I did something I didn't like and... So I got to figure out a way to cover it up. And luckily enough, all I have to do is just get some water in there and wash it out. And it's just going to become part of the background. So you never want to become too, uh, you know, set on exactly everything you've put down. You want to be able to, especially in mixed media or some, you know, when you're experimenting, you want to be able to kind of go with the flow. And so, you know, now I have a brighter more vivid pink there and if I was so set in my background then that would be upsetting for some people or for me but you know you just go with it and now I've just found some different circles because those will be my ornaments and I did actually get um this was I had a vintage greeting card and like it's like older old as the hills and this is kind of inspired by that this whole piece uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I do have actual circle stencils, but I don't know where they are. And I'm sure I could find them if I looked hard enough. But, you know, I didn't feel like doing that and I needed to get this video done. So uh, because I want these ornaments to be spheres and I want them to look like they have like a, you know, they're around, not just a flat circle. I'm just kind of working with the shading on them and making some areas like I'm lifting some of the color off of some areas and you'll see me go in later on with some more color and some more shadows and you can really see now that that gesso um, that's one of the areas where I picked up gesso the gesso wasn't dry and so it's kind of um, when it got watery it just you know tore up not not the canvas the canvas itself is fine but the gesso did not dry long enough but you can see how I work with that and let me just give a disclaimer here if this was like a painting definitely a fine art painting but like a whole you know acrylic painting and not a mixed media type thing I would completely start over again on this canvas and do it properly but because I know what I'm the technique that I'm doing and the look I'm going for I know that that's not going to affect anything 
And in fact, you know, I can work with it and maybe it'll benefit me in the end, which turns out it did. So just for those of you who are, you know, maybe freaking out that I didn't fix that. In certain situations, I definitely would fix that and I would never leave it like that. But because I know that this is not one of those situations where it needs to be fixed, then I just went ahead with it. And as you can see, I am just layering. I don't want, I want some circles to be, some ornaments, I'm going to call them ornaments now, some ornaments to be farther back and some to be forward. Like I, I want to try to give some dimension into this piece so that it doesn't look all flat. So here I am just kind of doing the same, using the same technique that I do when I do watercolor flowers for the leaves and the foliage and greenery, whatever you want to call it. And I just flick my brush. So if you want to see more about how I do this, uh, you can watch any of my watercolor flower videos and I, I, they should all be in a playlist together. So I'm just using a couple of the different shades and what works really great, uh, which I wasn't quite sure how it would work, but I can blend some of these colors in and use some of these different green color, green shades, and it actually works. And now I'm just putting in some more specific Christmassy leaves. Uh, like the holly and I'm gonna put in some berries as well so I don't know if you can tell but I decided to narrate this video at the beginning I wasn't narrating it and then um, I really needed to make sure that this video didn't take forever so then I sped it up and now I'm narrating I really do like the idea of you guys hearing my thought process as I paint so I think there's a definite benefit to just doing the video, filming it, talking, and then uploading that. But the problem with that is that it gets so long. And so I really need to just try to do a little bit of both. And I think that's, you know, maybe a good time to do like a live video sometime uh, when I get brave enough to do a live one. And... Yeah, I just don't want my videos to be so crazy long, but I don't, I, I myself don't mind watching really long videos and, you know, I'll, I'll watch them in different sittings. I don't necessarily watch them all at once or one long video at once, but anyways, uh, so now I'm actually mixing up some colors. So I've combined some of the colors and if you've heard me talk before about indigo in watercolor, you know how much I like that color because it just adds so much depth and I don't know for some reason I just love using indigo when I'm drawing water when I'm painting watercolor flowers and so that's what I did here and I just I don't know I just mixed up some different shades that I thought might work I think it's like some purple and blue and basically I kind of tried to make a black but make it more navy more indigo than a black and I am just uh, emphasizing some of the berries, like putting some shading in there so that they don't look flat. And just doing some blue tones, some darker blue tones. And of course, I've got to do some more shading. So just like with watercolor, you, you know, let it 
do do a layer and then go in with another layer. Um, it's very similar technique actually, as water as you would paint with watercolor. Uh, but the great thing is, like, look at these vivid colors. They're just awesome. And I can tell you that this painting has not faded at all from this. And I'm narrating it now uh, a couple of weeks after I painted this, after I did this video. So it did not fade after once it dries. And it, and it does dry a lot faster. So I don't know. I think painting with chalk markers might become another thing I do. I'm really loving it. And actually, they just sent me, you know how I, was, I might as well say this in here because I'm narrating it. Um, they just sent me today, actually, uh, a whole set of their metallic chalk markers. Because they had asked me for my input. And I said, you know, the metallic ones, I really love everything. But the metallic ones, I'm just, I'm not sure about um, some of the colors and whatever. Or if they're metallic -y enough for me. So they sent me their whole... Uh, pack of 10 metallic markers and these are the ones that you do pump so they're just as thick and these have reversible markers or have reversible nibs so um I'll I'll do a video using those but um yeah so isn't that cool that they sent me those uh you know I mean I wasn't trying to complain or anything uh but they just wanted my honest feedback so that's what I said and then they're like oh well, we'll send you the pack of 10 and so the ones I'm using here in this video are, uh, you could see they're not the ones you pump they're just they are but they are and the nib uh, is I think it's a little bit I don't think it's six millimeter nib this one is six millimeter and the ones I got today and they're reversible like the the nibs are so so you get the bullet tip and the chisel tip okay so back to this uh, I'm just going back in and and now you can see I'm layering some of that light green on top of the dark green and it totally works and like I am just I've got to I've got to get all the colors and unfortunately I'm in Canada so you can't get all the colors or not you can't actually I think most of the colors are available as far as colors just the different forms that they come in there's not quite as many and I can't get the watercolor markers that they have um in the states uh store they have the watercolor ones but in Canada I can't but as far as the chalk markers I think all the colors are available in the Canada store and I'm not sure about the UK store but the this contest is open to Canada residents UK residents and United States residents so but all the details will be in the description below and they are also on the other video and any video I do with these I will put that and I'll also include the discount code below as well as the link that you can use to purchase these so they do have an Amazon store and they they did ask that I include a link for the Amazon store because they are trying to promote their store on Amazon as well. So, and I know in Canada, I have to order from the Amazon Canada store when I order them, but they're also trying to promote their Amazon store in the US. So yeah, like I would say these are definitely really cool. Like if you do watercolor and stuff, you kind of already got yourself a little bit set up because it's a very similar technique and there's a few things that are different but it's really cool I would definitely say go get these markers and yes of course it does help me <clears throat> if you use my discount code and whatever I do get a little bit of a commission fee from that but yeah these are these are kind of awesome to paint with
here I am just trying to add some different kind of branches, just some more texture. So I thought I'd add some more sticks in there. And I'm using just kind of a purpley shadow color with the indigo to do that. I didn't want to go in with more green because it's, it's pretty good with green there. And I just wanted some different, different texture in there, I guess. And I'm not sure what that, so that purple thing, you saw me stencil that. Yeah, well, I'm going into it. So I'm just washing that out now because it didn't work out. Like I tried to stencil like a little bow, like it was hanging from like a little string, kind of like what is above the blue ornament, but it didn't work so well. So you can see, like I just kind of washed it away. And so I am not sure how these work when it comes to, you know, when everything's said and done. So I need to have a look at that. Like what I should do is go and check out, go and grab this painting and see if any of these colors wash off. Cause obviously they'll wash off on windows or non-porous surfaces, but on, on porous surfaces, I don't know how they uh, age, like how, how to seal them in. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, age is not the right term. I'm not sure why <laughs> I'm using that term. Uh, I'm just not sure what to do over time with them if and how to protect them over time. So, you know, definitely you would want to seal them, but you also want to make sure that you don't run, that nothing is going to run when you seal it. So I am going to test that out and I will do that in another video and I'll definitely have that for you when I do another video with these markers um, and I'll be doing something with the metallic ones soon. And there is the contest right now. So I'm gonna be definitely be doing another one and it's open for all of the month of January. So at the beginning of February, I will pick a winner and then Chocola is gonna send some product to the winner. So uh, it is open to Canada, US, and the UK. And uh, I'll just let you watch the rest of the video. And I hope you have enjoyed it. At the end, I just, I add some sparkle and some glitter. And so I kind of angle it and stuff. And you can see that. And it, I gotta say, like, I love the painting. Like, I have it just kind of up on my landing like down when, I, when you walk down the stairs I really do like it so I'm going to be doing some more with these chalk markers and definitely uh, put comment down below and if you you know have any ideas for what you'd like to do with these chalk markers uh, leave a comment and you will be eligible to win the contest